Hello and welcome to GC360, where news comes full circle. I'm Ross Thompson. And I'm Maddie Holtz. We bring you news from the Georgia College campus and across the Milledgeville community. Coming up, the GC Pride Alliance held the biggest fundraiser this past Thursday at Buffington's. A political debate inside the ANS Auditorium. We'll tell you who was there. And UWB competed in a flag football championship over the weekend. Found out how they did. All that and more on this edition of GC360. Drag performers rocked the house this past Thursday at Buffington's. GC360's Gabby Duchateau got the scoop. The Drag Show. It's more than just a fundraiser. Drag is the most gorgeous thing in the world in America right now. Drag is such an amazing opportunity to just say to everyone in society, like, I'm here and I'm vibrant and even though like you've been trying to push down this side of me Once it comes out. It's even more beautiful than you imagined Carmen Sedexa and other performers grace the stage twice with two solo performances dances range from high energy To slow and somber really great way for some of our own students to just express themselves, have fun, and just kind of connect with the Milledgeville community in the way they don't normally get to. The GC Pride Alliance does not require any drag experience prior to performing. Uh, my first time ever doing this was last semester, and it was fantastic. Um, my last time performing, I was really scared because um, I uh, had never been out in public in like a skirt before, and now like, I'm killing it. I feel very good. <laughs> I feel great. I'm, I'm down here and I'm so ready to get on that stage and just kill it. The drag show is a unique twist to the downtown life in Milledgeville, but that didn't seem to stop anybody in attendance from having a good time. The Pride Alliance wanted to raise money for their organization and create an atmosphere that everyone can enjoy. For tonight, honestly, I would just be happy if everyone had fun because that's kind of, you know, like inviting the rest of the community to be a part of something so integral to the LGBT community's history like drag is a really special thing that we want to share with everybody. The drag show raised $1,871. For tonight, honestly, I would just be happy if everyone had fun because that's kind of, you know, like inviting the rest of the community to be a part of something so integral to the LGBT community's history like drag is a really special thing that we want to share with everybody. The GC Pride Alliance will hold their next drag show during spring semester at Buffington's, although the date is not yet determined. For GC 360, I'm Gabrielle Duchateau. Now we've got Gabby in the studio with us today. So Gabby, you were at the show. How, how was the turnout? The turnout was actually like the biggest I had ever seen the, one of the drag shows here. So. Buffington's was probably packed to the absolute capacity, if I'm being honest. Some people showed up but ended up leaving because there were so many people there, they couldn't see anything. I had to stand up on a table to even be able to see anything that was going on and get footage. So if that tells you anything about how crowded it was. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like it was a packed house. It was a packed house. So what do you think the best performance that night was, if you had to categorize? The best performance was definitely by Papa B Word. Papa B Word. It, both of their performances, they did um, Fergalicious, which was which closed the first half of the show. Oh, okay. Absolutely amazing. It was great. He does a lot of jumps into splits, and it was quite impressive, I'm going to be honest. So, yeah. So, do you think that you'll be attending the drag show in the spring? Absolutely. I will. I love the drag show. I will absolutely be um, attending. Well, Gabby, thank you for, thank you for being here. On Wednesday, November 6th, a student group called Bobcats Vote hosted a political debate inside the ANS Auditorium. All the major political organizations on campus were there. GC360's Connor King took a look at how Georgia College's students are getting into politics. On stage were the College Republicans, the Young Democrats, Turning Point USA, the Young American for Liberty, and the Young Democratic Socialists for America. Bobcats Vote, a nonpartisan organization on campus, organized the event. 
Their mission is to create a more engaging campus when it comes to political involvement. Ruby Zimmerman is their team leader. We can uh, really make change as a demographic because if the youth vote, which would be 18 to 24 year olds, if they all got out to vote, they could make waves. The debate focused on some of the major issues in the United States today, such as marijuana legalization, immigration, climate change, and term limits. The college Republicans and young Democrats said having all five parties on the same stage was special. Obviously the Democrats and the Republicans are going to be the ones that people are going to end up voting for on the national stage, but on local elections you will get more diversity in, uh, you might get a socialist candidate, you might get a libertarian candidate, so it's good to know the policy positions of uh, these candidates. Interest in the debate was strong. The entire front section of the ANS auditorium filled up. Only some seats in the back were empty. I think it's awesome that we have such a politically active uh, campus here. Uh, I think it's important that students should get involved politically at a young age. Um, politics is what runs our country and it's important that everyone votes and it's important that everyone has a voice uh, regardless of what that voice is saying. This was the first debate hosted by Bobcats Vote and they hope to put on another one next year closer to the 2020 presidential election. For GC360, I'm Connor King. The Campus Activities Board is hosting its annual Battle of the Bands tonight at 7.30 p.m. in Magnolia Ballroom. GC360's Natalie Sadler gives us a preview. This year, six entrants will compete at the Battle of the Bands for the honor of opening the 2020 Homecoming Concert. Singer-songwriter Jackson McAfee, Christian rock band The Wright Brothers, hip-hop artist Hype, and rock groups Parking Garage, El Camino, and Pajama Party. Basically, bands all across campus, all different music genres, come together and battle it out to be the opening act for our homecoming concert. Audience participation is vital. Students have the opportunity to anonymously vote for their favorite acts. The winner of the Battle of Bands is determined their three prizes. There's first place, second place, second place, and an uh, audience choice award. Audience choice award, of course, is picked by the audience. They have these cute little guitar trips that they get at the beginning, and they get to vote throughout the Battle of the Bands event um, on their favorite bands. First and second prize is based on a panel of faculty and staff across campus. Battle of the Bands has never had a hip hop artist before, so it'll be a step towards a new genre. Hype is an artist. Um, He's actually a student who has been on Georgia College's campus for a few years now. Um, he started off as a Georgia College early college student. I was like, oh, you should come and do Battle of the Bands. He's like, really? I've never seen a hip hop artist. And I was like, you could be the first. Fidelis Folafak, who goes by his stage name Hype, started seriously recording music last year. He decided to participate in this year's Battle of the Bands after his friends encouraged him to audition and show his talent. It's kind of it's cool to, you know, to be the first. Uh, because that also means you kind of get to set the standard for, you know, uh, if and when there will be more. Hype has opened at the A3C Artist Showcase with Sunny Digital, a hip-hop producer, and has done several open mic nights around Atlanta. I hope the music resonates with people. Um, I hope that they like it. I hope they enjoy it. And, you know, hopefully I will get a chance to open up for Homecoming. The rock group Parking Garage is another highly anticipated Battle of the Bands contestant. My name's Dakota. I'm Nathan. I'm Casey, and we are the band Parking Garage. We mostly do a lot of dance, alt-type rock music. Salt rock. Yeah, salt rock, as we have now dubbed it. Guitarist Nathan Watley and bassist Dakota Snow began performing together while they were in high school. After arriving at GC, they added drummer Casey O'Neill to their group and created the band. Parking Garage released their first full-length album in February. I think it, we think it's going to be a really fun opportunity. Um, it will be good to get to hear some of the other bands for the first time and um, maybe uh, get some new fans in the process. So there you are, Battle of the Bands. For GC360, I'm Natalie Sadler. Coming up, Gabby will bring you a look at some of the interesting yoga that's going on at Georgia College's Yogathon. Don't go anywhere. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One 
and 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Finals are coming up, which means stress levels are at an all-time high. But the Wellness and Recreation Center has got a stress-leaving event just for you. Gabrielle Duchateau has a story. The Georgia College Wellness Center is hosting the first ever Yogathon this month. It's all about stress relief. Yogathon is a month-long event that we are basically encouraging students to dedicate their time to preparing their mind and body for final exams and just the time of year that's coming up with it being holiday season and the stress that um, comes with both of those at the same time. Not only will the usual classes like sunrise yoga and fit yoga be offered, but some new and unusual classes will be available. We've added glow yoga and we've added animal flow yoga. I had the chance to attend the first ever glow yoga class at Georgia College. Um, it's more of the upbeat kind of class that we just throw the fun in there of all the, the glow sticks, the glow bracelets, the black lights. The theme was electric, but the class was serene. Attending yoga classes this month also comes with perks. The person who attends the most classes will win a $25 Visa gift card. Participation is important to us, but it's really our way of trying to encourage students and motivate them to maintain their health. Yogathon is not the only monthly event that the Wellness Center will have. If you're feeling stressed out, head over to Yogathon and exercise your mind and body. For GC360, I'm Gabrielle Duchateau. Did you know that Max features consistent vegan options and recently won an award for it? Carl Tulis went down to the Max and found out more. The Max at Georgia College was recently recognized as one of the most vegan friendly in the state. PETA, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, recently gave the vegan station at the Max an A ranking in their vegan report card. Everybody's talking about the vegan. They really love the food, the flavors, and the taste of the food. And, and it's very fun, and it's cool, and they love the station. With the vegan here, we prepare, we prep, I prep and prepare like um, all veggies. It's all vegan. And it's a fun station. It's a whimsical kind of station. We have different things every day. Georgia College was one of only four universities in the state to receive an A score. The state average was C. Um, I kind of throw in some little things, little goodies, little special and extra things for my vegan babies, what I call them. And um, it's cool. It's really fun. Reporting for GC360, this is Carl Tullius. Veterans Day was Monday, November 11th. Georgia College held a ceremony commemorating those who served and are currently serving in our military. Our very own Evan Spot was there to cover the event. Veterans Day is a time when we come together to remember and thank those who have served and sacrificed in our nation's military. Georgia College President Steve Dorman officiated at a ceremony Monday morning to honor all those who served. For Baldwin County, that meant remembering Army Staff Sergeant Alex French IV. Staff Sergeant French, is the only service member from Baldwin County to lose his life during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was killed in Afghanistan. Members of the French family were present. We're pleased to have the family of Staff Sergeant French with us today. Would the family members of Sergeant French please stand and allow us to recognize you? I think we have his widow, his children, his parents, his sisters, his paternal grandmother and maternal grandparents with us. 
Thank you all for being here. And his widow, Shanika French, spoke on his behalf. Veteran Day gives Americans the opportunity to celebrate the bravery and sacrifice of all branches of the military and all the men and women who wear the uniform proudly. Today, Alex is being celebrated. Neil Dyer of Dyer Construction was also recognized as he donated and installed the newly placed plaque noting the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. <clears throat> and I said, well, that's a no-brain. We have got to do. During the ceremony, wreaths were placed at each memorial stone to honor those lost in war. The first memorial was World War I. After that was World War II. Next was the Korean War, continuing with the Vietnam War. Finally, wrapping up with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. This wreath was carried by the children of Staff Sergeant French, honoring the fallen on behalf of a grateful community. Reporting for GC360, I'm Evan Sabat. The sports team is up next. Did you know that Georgia College's flag football team competed for the state title? We'll tell you what happened when we return. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to GC360. It's time for your weekly sports update. I'm Herndon Lee. I'm Daniel Master DeTero. And I'm Kirsten Skipper. Uncles with benefits, Georgia College's flag football team is continue, continuing their domination with a huge win down in Statesboro this past weekend. I drove down there to check it out. This past weekend, Georgia Southern hosted the 36th annual Georgia Peach Classic Football Championship. College intramural teams from all over the state of Georgia gathered to battle for the state championship. Georgia College sent two squads, a co-ed team and the UWB, or Uncles with Benefits, men's team. Some members of the co-ed side also competed on the men's team. Each won the early fall intramural championship here at Georgia College. You know, I hope we get challenged at least once. So hopefully we have a close game, that'd be fun. The tournament started Friday evening with two pool games to determine where each team would be placed in the bracket. The men's team went 2-0 and took the number one seed with a first round bye. The co-ed team went 1-1 one and, one and took the number three seed in their bracket. With only five teams in the co-ed bracket, Georgia College started in the semifinals against the Rackyard Bullies of Georgia Southern. It was a well-fought game, but in the end, Southern came out on top and headed to the finals. Michael LaHood led the men's team in the second round against a team from Georgia Southern in tackles for loss. With two sacks in the game, quarterback Josh Hammond tossed three touchdown passes to secure the win, 19-18. In the semifinals against the running Cougars of Columbus State, LaHood again led the team with two big tackles for loss. In the last minute of the game, with the Cougars threatening to score, Matthew Quint came up with a game-saving interception to preserve a 20-18 win for Georgia College. In the men's final, Georgia College played against another team from Georgia Southern. Josh Hammond threw two touchdowns in the first half, and the defense held Southern scoreless. Michael LaHood and Grayson Gavilek had two big tackles for loss that cost Southern a touchdown. 
What's up, guys? We're here uh, at Georgia Southern halftime during the championship game between Georgia College and Georgia Southern. Georgia College is up 12 to 0. Lots of great passes, lots of great runs by Josh Hammond, and one awesome great sack by uh, Michael LaHood. It is going great out here. We'll catch up at the end of the game. Hopefully, Georgia College comes out on top. In the third quarter, Michael Clegg intercepted a pass in the end zone. Hammond threw one more touchdown pass in the second half. Southern scored a last second touchdown, but UWB claimed an 18 to six victory. Josh Hammond said it was a team victory. It was pretty awesome. Defense really stepped up that game. Didn't score anything until the very end. Glenn Williams had got mossed, um, but it, it was exciting for sure. For sure. Next stop for Georgia College's UWB is Nationals in Austin, Texas. I feel great, we played well, the boys look good, and we're ready for Nationals. We're gonna kill them all there too. From Georgia College, the National Championship will take place from January 3rd through the 5th. With the tournament win, the state will pay for UWB's entry fee, and Georgia College will cover travel and hotels. This season, the Falcons are currently sitting at a win-loss record of 2-7, and seven, with their most recent win being a big upset against the New Orleans Saints, who were 7-1 and one at the time. Despite this big win, the Dirty Birds have no chance to fly their way into this playoff season. Fans can only hope that this team can regroup and come back stronger than ever next season. Unlike the Falcons, the Braves rose up in the regular season with high hopes of making a deep run in the MLB playoffs. The excitement was short-lived with a first-round loss to the St. Louis Cardinals, with Game 7 being a historic 13-1 to blowout. The Braves have a young roster full of talent, so the only way to go is up from here. The Georgia Bulldogs are having a strong season despite an ugly 20-17 loss to unranked South Carolina. They kept their heads up long enough to pull out a 24-17 win against Florida and also skunked Missouri 27-0. The Bulldogs' college football playoff hopes are still alive if they can keep the ball rolling and win the rest of their games. They are back in action this weekend against the Auburn Tigers. Let's throw it back to the sports desk. Let me tell you, the Georgia Bulldogs this weekend, uh, they're playing against Auburn. Um, I think it's going to be a really interesting game. Uh, the Georgia offensive line has been a really great uh, asset this year, giving a, a bunch of time to Jake Fromm uh, in the pocket. Uh, if we can have that this weekend, if we can get the running game going um, and we can get some explosive uh, offensive plays on the field, I think Auburn uh, doesn't stand a chance of this weekend against Georgia. Yeah, I was worried after the game against South Carolina, you know, but after the two wins taking place after that, I'm really confident that they have what it takes to beat Auburn this weekend. Yeah, I'm excited to go drive down there and see it for myself. Yeah, Georgia's defense is just totally unstoppable. Uh, it's going to be a really good game this weekend. What about you, Kirsten? What do you think? I'm just glad my LSU Tigers won this past weekend, so. GC Volleyball has a home game tomorrow against Lander at 7 p.m. in Centennial. Show your blue and green pride while cheering on your Lady Bobcats. Also, wish luck to the GC men's and women's basketball teams. Both are playing on the road this weekend. That's it for sports this week. Stay tuned for our entertainment crew as they bring you the scoop on Disney's new streaming service. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry one in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving.
Welcome back to GC360. I'm Frankie Mastris. And I'm Jordan Richardson. With the launch of Disney Plus this week, the internet has been buzzing with the news. As you can see, the new streaming service features material from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic. Perhaps the biggest and most exciting thing surrounding that is that almost every Marvel movie is on the streaming site, including Avengers Endgame. The site also has an extensive collection of Star Wars movies and almost every Pixar animated movie you could think of. Not to forget about all of your favorite classic Disney Channel TV shows such as Wizards of Waverly Place, Hannah Montana, and The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Notably, however, Disney has gone to great lengths to encourage diversity and acceptance. In each of its old movies, especially ones like Dumbo, that portray outdated and offensive racial stereotypes, there is a disclaimer in the description preparing the viewer. One original series Disney Plus has recently released is High School Musical, The Musical. I know I was skeptical when it first announced Disney was making a High School Musical show, but it doesn't seem so bad after all. Check out the poster behind me. It follows students at the school where High School Musical was shot as they have put on their own version of the movie. The series has everyday high school drama, rivalry, and of course, teenage romance. Watch the first season of High School Musical, The Musical today and tell us your opinion on our Instagram or Facebook at GC360. That's all we have for this week. Let's throw it over to Gabby with the weather. Welcome back to your weekend weather forecast. I'm Gabrielle Duchateau. Hopefully everyone has thawed out after these last few frigid days. The good news is that it might warm up, slightly. On Friday, expect showers in the morning. Hopefully that ruin won't ruin anyone's weekend plans, so you should be in class or sleeping during those hours at least. The high for Friday looks to be 52 with a low of 41. Ouch. Expect 90% humidity and a 50% chance of rain. Saturday is looking like a nicer day with sunny skies and a high of 57, and the low will drop to 34 in the evening. Humidity will be lower than Friday at 59%, and the chance of rain drops to 10. Sunday will be partly cloudy with the high at 57, and the low drops to 39. The chance of rain stays at 10%, and the humidity is again at 59%. Here in Milledgeville, we might be complaining and worrying about the temperature being below 50, to the point where Georgia College was monitoring the weather Tuesday night. But I think we can all be thankful we do not live in the north. In places like Michigan, autumn weather has moved out and winter is closing in. So let's be thankful for our 50 degree temperatures. Ross, Maddie. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of GC360. I'm Ross Thompson. And I'm Maddie Holtz. When we're not on air, we can keep you up to date on our social media pages, facebook.com slash GC360, at GC360 News on Twitter and Instagram, and on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash GC360 News. Always available to you, GC360, where news comes full circle. And it's as simple as that. <laughs>